Yes. So his first hire comes from this dude from the 76ers. His name, Mark Eversley. Woo! He's him in as GM. So tell me a little bit about him. Well, first of all, I am thrilled that the Chicago Bulls have their very first black general manager. I am so happy for the Bulls organization in that sense. Um, not only is he not only is he the first uh, black general manager for the Bulls, he is also a widely respected guy around the league. Yes. Players love him. He he's built relationships with so many of these guys. If you know, I remember back when Sun was young. Okay, yes, talk about it. I'm just looking up one thing. Keep talking, free, Sun. A, free agents did not want to come play for Chicago. No. Uh, Chicago was not necessarily a destination place for them. And a lot of it is because of the way the organization was set up. You know, they just did not feel comfortable. And especially in this day and age and how the game has changed, players want, you know, they, they grew, a lot of these NBA players grow up together. They play AAU ball together, college yeah. ball together. They know one another and they want to play with one another in the professional level. And now, so what you need to do is you need to hire guys who can bring these players in, something that the Bulls organization never had. They never had, like, access to these players in the way that Mark Eversley will. You know, so just because he, he knows was the, the Sixers' senior vice president of player personnel. Okay. That's who he was. Okay. Okay. You know, and not to mention he was also – he worked for uh, Nike – Yep, that's what I was about to get into. Yes, yes. Okay, so if you wanted to get into the Nike portion and how that sort of ties in, go. Yeah, I, I just think it's really cool. Like you were saying, he has player relationships. He also has agent relationships. Mm -hmm. This guy, it sounds like he's very much a good listener. Mm -hmm. He's very humble. He's worked his way up. He has a lot of background in different areas, which really allows him to – and, I, I, you know, just listening from him, listening to him in a couple of interviews, he's very charismatic, which makes sense from going to Nike, being able to focus on brand, mm -hmm. which is so important. I think that's part of the reason our tourists brought in Mark Eversley is to repair the Bulls brand. Mm -hmm. Nobody really wants to come here. It's yeah. just kind of what it is. I mean, their biggest accus accusation. Acquisition? Brand, yeah, they're terrible, man. Brain. Uh, accusa oh, I hope <laughs> Accusations of what, Tim? Of oh sucking. my! Of sucking. <laughs> of Number sucking. one problem: they suck. Yes. Anyway, the biggest move they made last year was bringing in Thad Young. Mm. He, they haven't really done much in the past couple of years. Players don't really want to interview here anymore. It's mm -hmm. just kind of aside from LeBron, and they bring up washed, washed up Dwayne Wade. Players like that, they're bringing in nobody really in the prime. So. I just think it's really cool that they brought in this guy from Nike who has all these relationships to help build the Bulls brand. And I think that's really cool of Arturis that he's taking his strength and bringing it in with his, so Everly's strength, bringing it in with his own strength. And they're just broadening this whole front office organization to really change the tune and narrative of the Bulls. Yes. I think it's important to note that uh, the importance of the fact that he did work uh, at Nike, because the question yeah. then becomes is, well, how does that translate to winning? You yeah. know, I mean, how does it translate to winning for the Bulls? But yeah, you have to sort of change what the, what, uh, what the identity or the look of, or the brand of the Bulls were. Yeah. And what it's been the whole time that I've been alive has right. been about keeping things in-house, having a very small front office, and yes. just saving money. It's never been a culture of winning. So yes. now that we've got these, this new organization coming in and making these sweeping changes, this gives the Bulls a chance to be able to maybe woo uh, a, a free agent. Like you know, an Anthony Davis or even just get an interview. Yes, Big yes. Deal. Yes, because let's, you know, let's be honest. I mean, when you talked about like LeBron James coming to Chicago, I don't, we don't know how serious LeBron was about coming to Chicago. Apparently he was, but that's just another thing. Okay. And, you know, as far as Dwayne Wade goes, yes, Dwayne Wade has ties to Chicago. So, yes. uh, you know, and, and really when you look at it, Chicago has never been sort of a destination spot for any of these free agents. Yeah. They're always talking, you know, why is it that like, you know, even when we talk about just some of the most recent free agents, 
Why was like Kevin Durant, uh, you know, Kyrie Irving, LeBron, Anthony Davis, any of these superstars, how come Chicago's name was never mentioned, but the Brooklyn Nets got, got interviews, even though, you know, it's cold as hell. That's part of the reason I hear. Yeah, okay. But yeah. The, the, the narrative around the league is that the Bulls front office is terrible. Correct. And the leadership's terrible. So, and then, you know, former coaches come out and smash the Bulls. Former players come out of there and smash the Bulls. I mean, it's just a recurring thing. Correct. Correct. And now I feel like all of that is changing. Yes. And I think it's important to note too, son, that they, on top of Eversley in the GM conversation, they brought an assistant GM and we're just briefly named JJ Polk, who is actually the director of basketball ops for the Pelicans. Really a cool hire. He's like an expert at salary cap. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess he used to play basketball in Europe. And also he has a law degree. Um, and I guess he worked in real estate too. So this guy's really smart. Our tourists, once again, pulling out all these pieces that he doesn't have strengths in and putting them all together versus just having that in-person, in-house, kind of like tight core that can't really do everything. 100%. I feel like, um, I feel like, He's widened the uh, AK has just widened the Bulls net in terms of accessibility, in terms of acquiring uh, players, and in, in terms of just you know um, building relationships with players yeah. and you know uh, coaches and whoever around the league. I mean, this just you know all of these moves just signal a complete changing of the guard for the Bulls. Uh, this so awesome. It's, it's so different it it's gives you hope. So, it's it does it does i mean even when gosh even when the bulls i mean post jordan the bulls had one real shot and that was when with derrick rose around 2000 yes. and yes. Then, and again a lot of those pieces i mean i, I give credit to uh, gar pax for for uh, drafting those players but mm -hmm. historically that is how the bulls were successful and that was like the only formula that they had because they had such a closed um organization to to the rest of the nba and now it's like i feel so much i, I just feel so much better that you know now possibly we're gonna get free agents now at least you know uh, there's a chance that we can actually talk to some of these superstars and they might actually come to chicago listen. or it listen. Might actually be a reality yeah we can you know it could be discussed you know, it's because when it came, when Anthony Davis or KD were free agents, we didn't even talk about it in yes. terms of like the Bulls. Even though the Bulls, you would there think was like a faint hope that Anthony Davis could come because he's from Chicago. Correct, and that was what we were hanging our hopes on, Tim. Yeah, but yeah. now it's different. You know, now it's different. Now it feels like yeah, yeah. You know, we might yeah. be able to bring out these other guys in. So it's great. So kind of wrapping that up, it's pretty cool that he brought in Eversley and Polk to kind of well-round this team. It's very exciting um, that AK is actually using other resources to make it himself better and the organization better.